Welcome, let's talk about serial killers. My name is Shish Merriweather and I'm the founder of Crime Viral Online. Today I'll be doing what I do best, which is talking about serial killers. If you have ever wondered why on earth women would fall in love with an incarcerated serial killer and the psychology behind this, we'll gather around and I'll explain it all. First we will take a look at serial killer Richard Ramirez who became known as the Night Stalker after he terrorised those who lived in Greater Los Angeles and San Francisco in the mid 1980s. Ramirez would use a variety of weapons including a .22 revolver, knives, machetes, tire irons, hammers to bludgeon his victims to death often after he had sexually assaulted them. In his own sinister words, he revealed, I love to kill people. I love to watch them die. I would shoot them in the head and they would squirm all over the place and then just stop. Or I would cut them with a knife and watch their faces turn white. I love all that blood. Despite his list of convictions that amounted to 13 counts of murder, five counts of attempted murder, 11 counts of sexual assault and 14 counts of burglary, he still managed to attract many female admirers. During his trial, when evidence of these violent attacks on women were being read out loud, one juror, Cindy Hayden, had started to fall in love with the sadistic serial killer. Ramirez, aware of this power that he had over her, would make eye contact throughout the trial and on Valentine's Day she gifted him a cupcake with a message, I love you, iced on top. Shortly after, she was dismissed from jury duty. Following his sentencing in court, which was the death penalty, Cindy continued to visit Ramirez behind bars. Eventually, she even introduced her parents to the serial killer. However, for her, she was just another face in a long queue of female admirers, all waiting to share a tender moment with the devout Satanist. According to the San Francisco Gate, during his 23 years on death row, he received bags upon bags of mail, mostly from women. So what is hybristophilia? Becoming infatuated with someone who has committed a serious crime, such as sexual assault or murder, is known as hybristophilia. It is one of the reasons behind the thousands of letters sent to serial killers from their admirers each year. In popular culture, it is also known as Bonnie and Clyde syndrome. There are many reasons behind this disorder. Professor of Forensic Psychology Catherine Ramsland reveals that women who have dated serial killers, like in the case of Richard Ramirez, even gone as far as marrying him, do so for the following reasons. They believe they can change a man as cruel and powerful as a serial killer. They see the little boy that the killer once was and seek to nurture him. They hope to share in the media spotlight or get a book or movie deal. They believe they are dating the perfect boyfriend. They are unable to find love in normal ways or they seek relationships that cannot traditionally be consummated. Then there also is this distorted idea of the perfect boyfriend. To a woman who has suffered in an abusive relationship in the past, a convicted criminal behind bars makes for an ideal partner. Allow me to explain. She knows where he is at all times. She knows or at least believes he is thinking about her because, well, he has a lot of hours in the day that he needs to fill doing not much else. While she can claim that he loves her, she does not have to endure the day-to-day -day issues involved in a traditional relationship such as there's no laundry to do or cooking for him and no accountability to him. So she can keep that fantasy charged up for a long time. Sheila Eisenberg, author of Women Who Love Men Who Kill explained, if the guy is behind bars, it is always exciting. It is easier to get a date or attention from a serial killer than say Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, for example, he's going to ignore your letters. He's not going to write back, but this guy is. He's probably reading his letters and responding to you because it puffs him up. It raises his status in his own eyes. So let's take a look at the marriage of Richard Ramirez and Doreen Loy. Doreen was a freelance teenage magazine writer and a self-described Catholic virgin from San Rafael. She became obsessed with Ramirez and in total had penned the serial killer 75 letters before he finally agreed to meet her behind bars. 
Doreen told the LA Times how she initially fell for Ramirez. She recalled, this was a feeling that began for as long ago as the night before he was arrested and police broke into the television show I was watching to broadcast his picture. Looking back, I see it was a turning point for me. He shows this mugshot in the middle of Dallas and I saw something in his eyes, something that captivated me. It wasn't as if I knew him, but it was something in his eyes, maybe a vulnerability, I don't really know. On October 3rd, 1996, they were married in California's San Quentin State Prison. Despite Doreen stating that she would commit suicide when Ramirez was executed, they eventually decided to divorce as she discovered he had 12 other girlfriends on the go. Who would have thought a serial killer would be cruel enough to cheat on his own wife? Doreen also revealed that she found the marriage lonely because her husband was unable to be beside her and she was unable to reach him the majority of the time. That's because he's on death row as an incarcerated serial killer, Doreen. So remember people, please at all times, don't be a Doreen as it can have fatal results. Serial killer Philip Karl Jablonski was convicted of brutally murdering five female victims between 1978 and 1991. Jablonski was a serial killer and a sadist. He preyed on women. He previously had attempted to suffocate his first wife and he murdered the mother of his own daughter. He was sentenced to only 12 years behind bars and despite his history of violent crimes, he met Carol Spadoni when she responded to a Lonely Hearts ad for prisoners. They first became pen pals and following his release, they moved in together. One year later, both Carol and her mother were murdered by Jablonski. He is currently now on death row for these crimes. Well, if you watch this video to find an explanation for high bristophilia, I hope that answered that for you. And if you watch the video to find out if writing love letters to serial killers is a wise thing to do, I hope we answered that for you too. Thanks for watching this video guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we'll be back next week with more videos. Feel free to comment in the section below with suggestions for any future videos that you'd like to see from us.